A goal of mine is to one day leave Airsoft knowing that I helped as many people as possible. I get asked hundreds of questions, if not thousands, from every type of player you could imagine, from beginners, longtime players, outsiders, vets, and so on. And when I'm asked about anything Airsoft related, I do what I can to help them out, and today, I'm going to do that for a few of the soon-to-be or beginner players. I have a lot of questions to go through, so this just might become a series in of itself, but we'll see. Some are easy to answer fast, and some need to be really explained, just so someone knows exactly what to do in the future. So let's just jump into this. After first, thanking Airsoft GI and GNG Armament for sponsoring this video, just like nearly everything else I do here on US Airsoft. They help me put together so much content, so it's only right that I show them a little appreciation for that. So thank you to Airsoft GI and GNG. But all right, it's time for the first question, which comes from Normal Kid YT, and he asks, "How old do you have to be to play?" That's a good question. A question I get asked a lot by parents and from younger, inspiring players. But there's an easy way to find out the answer. Head on over to Google, search up your local fields and close quarter battle arenas, and see what they say about age restrictions. Here's an example right from D14 Airsoft. Players under 18 must have a guardian and complete a digital waiver before entering the field. If multiple players arrive with a guardian, that guardian may sign responsibility for all players. No players under 12 years old are allowed. Don't see anything regarding age after searching their websites? Then just go ahead and call them up or have a parent make the call. Every place can have different rules, just like how big events have different rules and restrictions, but I've seen players as young as 12 at fields. Some places might require you to be accompanied by a legal guardian, so expect some steps to go through if you're 12 or under. And that's only regarding US games. Outside the United States, you'll want to really call up your local fields and arenas to get a solid answer. Alexander Gore asks, can you replace the orange tip to black in the United States? Yes, you can, but only after purchasing the replica. Here in the United States, by regulation, we must have at least a quarter inch blaze orange tip on all replica or imitation firearms. Some companies do take this a little too far, like seen here on my GNG M14, and some companies do the bare minimum, like on my ICS Galils. Everything from Nerf guns to cap guns can be seen with tips just like these, but after you buy it up from the store, then you can repaint them or replace the entire tip immediately. Just be sure to look for a pin that most likely is holding the tip to the end of the barrel onto the threads, or to melt the glue that's also holding the tip in place. I buy airsoft replicas all the time secondhand that don't even have orange tips, but again, this only applies to US law. The third question comes from Dark Tank 97 and he asks, what should be the first camo I get? When utilizing camouflage, you need to build your loadout around your surroundings. To keep it simple, you wouldn't wear a heavy all-white snow kit in a desert, nor would you wear an all-black umbrella corporations loadout in an environment like this if your goal is to blend in. So take a look around at the environment around you before you start gathering parts for your loadout. Oh, and why not try camo patterns hardly seen at your local fields? There was a time when everyone wanted Russian kits because no one else had that kind of stuff, but nowadays you'll see Russian kits sprinkled around everywhere. So balance out your effectiveness and uniqueness if you want to stand out as you blend in. Here's another good question, this time from Justin Hansen. What is the bang bang rule? Alright, so the bang bang rule works like this. Let's say that I brought out a rifle to a field that's shooting at 480 feet per second, but the field I'm playing at said I can't shoot any player within 50 feet with this rifle. So instead, I have to shout out bang bang so I don't cause any potential damage to that player. You're pretty, you're this way, good. I still eliminate the player, but I don't have to actually fire a shot or possibly harm that player. This rule can be implemented due to insurance or to avoid arguments or even fights. Ironically, I've seen this rule actually cause more arguments and altercations, especially when someone runs around a corner yelling bang bang at a million miles an hour at half a dozen players. Some people won't even call these kinds of hits when it happens, or players will actually ignore the rule and shoot at point blank ranges anyway. Of course, don't do this. But you can see dozens of examples of how the bang bang rule works to protect younger and newer players and fails when used against highly competitive players or in certain situations. But if you're curious if your field or arena has a bang bang rule or a safety kill or anything of the sort, then be sure to listen up at the safety briefing or look up the rules online. And for the final question of this episode, Jonathan asked, are sports classes appropriate in airsoft? If we're talking about these or a pair of Oakleys like these, then no, don't even risk it. 
You need to be serious when it comes to protecting your eyesight. Just imagine how badly this situation could have been. Properly ANSI rated eye protection should be the only thing that you rely on to shield your eyes from BBs strong enough to shatter your teeth. Better yet, find yourself eye protection that is sealed around your eyes to make sure nothing can even get close to your eyes. Most fields require full eye seal protection, so keep that in mind. My suggestions for good eye protection that any field will be fine with? Almost anything from revision like these Desert Locust goggles, any of the dye masks like this Dye i 5 or even these would work. Just please, no matter what happens on the field, during a game, when you're on the field, never take off your eye protection unless an admin personally tells you that you can. I've seen a lot of close calls and I've seen some really bad accidents, so please just keep your eye protection on. And with that, I think I'm done for this first episode of 5 Questions. That actually sounds like a good title for the series. But please go ahead and ask any questions that you might have about Airsoft, even if you're a newbie, in the comments down below. Even if you're a longtime player, go ahead and ask your questions down below. I'll try to answer as many questions as possible, even if they're about the industry or little insider tips, then I'll see what I can do. And maybe you'll see your question in the next episode. I really hope to help people out with the series and implore other YouTubers to do the same thing. Big thanks to Airsoft GI and GNG Armament for, again, doing what they always do by supporting the videos I do here. I also want to thank everyone who asked their questions and continue to ask their questions in every video I put out. And I cannot forget about the Super Chat donators who graciously donated in the last live stream. I really appreciate you all, just like how I appreciate every US Airsoft channel member. All these people here directly help the channel, and there's a lot of stuff I couldn't do if it wasn't for them. So I make sure to treat them with a few exclusive perks that only US Airsoft channel members can get. Like getting to watch videos like this one before anyone else. And if that sounds good to you, then why not become a member today? But until that next video drops from the city of San Antonio, this has been Scott Hollenbeck, and I will be sure to see you all next time. Good.